comes to the business of life. Dating may be the ultimate sharing economy. You share dinners, you share personal details, and possibly even your bed. But while apps like Tinder, Bumble, and Grindr have simplified logistics, the dynamics seem more complex than ever. Do these targeted apps cut out meaningless dates or shut you off from meaningful partners? Are we better off financially and emotionally? Right now, we're going to find out, and as always, we'll break down the issue using facts, figures, dollars, and cents. I'm joined by a panel of brilliant experts trying to answer the question, what is the business of dating? One out of every four young people use online dating apps, and couples who meet online marry two years faster on average than couples who meet in real life. They also saved nearly $13,000. Carly, how has online dating changed things? I mean, it's easy to now meet people from your bedroom in your sweatpants, which is, makes it a lot easier for me. Yeah. It's cheaper because you don't have to go out to meet people. But also, we now have more choice. I walk into a bar and I can choose from 20 people, or I can be on my phone and choose from 20,000. So why do you think it's cheaper now? Well, being single, I used to think, was really expensive. Because mm -hmm. if I wanted to meet people, I would go out to bars, and I would spend a lot of money sort of like drinking and like awkwardly prowling social spaces. Now I do that from my bed and I don't have to spend any money. Christopher, there are apps for religions, ethnic groups. Is that kind of ethically okay? You wouldn't be able to pick your friends that way or colleagues, right? Well, it's interesting. I'm married to a woman who was raised in a half Muslim, half Hindu family in Africa. Right? I never would have gone looking for that. And she wouldn't certainly have looked for a white guy from America. So I think there's a messiness to relationships that sort of gets eliminated when we're f screening out for certain religions or certain backgrounds or this or that. That's a really interesting point. And the question remains, can you find love? Consider these numbers. One in three American marriages begin online, but in online dating, less than 1% of replies actually lead to the exchange of phone numbers. We actually know now that online dating does not work out well for most people. Online dating and sites like Tinder work really well for a small percentage of people because you have to be better than average to be worth swiping on. So you have to be like, have more social status, better looking than usual, make more money, have a better job, have a better education. And then people who are just like basic and normal don't do well in online dating actually. You have to be a I, little bit better than average to be I worth it. I completely disagree. If we look at the first statistic, one in three marriages begin online. Those aren't necessarily the elite class of people who are the one in three marriages. These are individuals who come from all walks of life. And Tinder really represents the democratization of dating. You have people from every educational background, almost every country in the world who are dating online. And so many people are finding success online. Is that the definition of success? Is marriage the definition of a Ma successful Well, marriage is, for the vast majority of the American population, marriage is what's considered to be the gold standard in terms of relationship success. I think a lot of people still want to get married. To me, I'm just like, what does marriage get me? Like, nothing. First of all, actually, the wedding is very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very expensive and annoying for all your friends. Um, I don't feel like women need the financial security of marriage um, like they used to. And also, divorce is really expensive. And I just don't see, you know, from a personal perspective, I don't see my relationship being more likely to last because we have this piece of paper. Um, I think that having a child together to me seems like a far greater commitment. Buying a house together, those things to me seem just like more valuable than, than the marriage itself. I think that marriage confers benefits that are not necessarily solely economic in nature. If we look at studies, obviously the benefits for men are much higher in terms of health long term. Men who are married tend to be healthier than their non-married counterparts as they age. But now we've moved over the past 50 some odd years from the 60s to this idea of an all-fulfilling marriage where people expect their partner to be able to meet their needs spiritually, sexually, emotionally, and intellectually, and get that all from one person, their spouse. And that's not necessarily realistic. People not only have to get different things from different people in terms of their spiritual and emotional needs, but also they need to feel fulfillment in themselves. So if people are going to have expectations of marriage that are not necessarily in line with reality, it would make sense that there would be a higher divorce rate, which we now see. Let's take another question from the audience right now. Yeah. Hello, um, I go and use Tinder a lot, and, but it's actually quite a bit pricey. I was just wondering if, you know, if there's any other options out Tinder, there. Tinder's free, I think. No, it's free, but not the dates. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. What do you think, Jessica? 
Well, it does cost money, but there are options that you can go to that may not necessarily be quite so expensive. You could go for a walk in the park. You could meet somewhere. You could also split the bill. There are options available to you. But dating, certainly, as we talked about initially, is an expensive venture. I do think dating is expensive. I mean, we live in New York. Like, drinks cost $16. But I also think that a lot of my male friends are far more quick to say, um, I'm off Tinder right now because I'm kind of broke. Because I do think mm. that they men need to think more about um, potentially paying for the bill, whereas, like, a woman, you the most you think you have to pay is just for yourself. Good observation. Let's see how that plays into these numbers. So 58% of men spend more than $50 per date during the first few weeks of dating, and 65% of women spend more than $50 per date to prep for that date. Carly, do you think women think less of a guy who's willing to split the bill or is even willing to let the woman pay? I'm not sure. I feel like, as someone who's, you know, fighting for gender equality for women, I think that we can't pick and choose when we want to be equal. I always offer to split the bill um, on a first date because you don't actually don't know what financial situation the guy is in, especially for the millennial generation. Like, I don't assume that a guy I meet that's my age makes more money than me. Um, I guess women do still make a little bit less on the dollar, but I think as for young people, I assume that I'm just as successful as a man. Like, I would feel like I owed him something if he paid for my dinner. But do you yeah. think guys think that they owe you something if you pay? Yeah, I mean, I think that <laughs> what Tinder and these apps have done is they've really, I think, helped level the playing field for men and women in terms of dating and casual sex. I think that we are more equal on a setting like Tinder. I think it's, we're starting to understand that women want to date in the same way that men want to date. That's a really interesting point. It actually leads us on to our next step. 49%, that's the share of online daters who say they're looking for marital relationships. Carly, are people fibbing when they say they want hookups? Do they actually want something more than that? I think people are looking for a broad spectrum of things. Um, I think that it creeps people out when they say that they're looking to get married sometimes because it just feels like you're jumping the gun. But I'm skeptical of the fact that they would actively say, I'm avidly not looking for marriage. You know, I think they're just like feeling it out. I think people want both. Honestly, I think most people want a deep, lasting, committed relationship. And they also want the excitement of meeting someone new and having uh, no strings attached. Let's turn to our audience. Does anyone here have a question? So I've come to think that um, everybody lies about something on their dating profile. I just want to know from you guys, do you think it's ever OK to be lying online? I just think it's awkward when people put photos that are not representative of themselves or information that isn't, because then you just get into uh, a reality situation where then you feel like you've met someone based on deceit. And Has to that happened to you? I mean, I think that the idea of catfishing is sort of a myth. I know it happens sometimes, mm -hmm. but um, if someone, I felt like someone lied to me to get me to sit in front of them, I would feel awkward about the whole situation going forward. Jessica, does it happen often? Well, we know that individuals can misrepresent who they are online. That's a common phenomenon, but that occurs in real life as well. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about online dating is that you have the opportunity to construct an identity online. And it's not only the identity of the person who you ideally would like to be, but it's also based upon how you believe others perceive you as being or how you believe other people would want you to be or how mm -hmm. you believe they think that you should act. And I think that the identity that you construct should match the reality of who you are, because ultimately, if you want to move forward with a more serious relationship, the person that you are in actuality has to match the person that they meet. So you don't think it's wrong ethically, you just think it's wrong on a practical basis? Well, I believe that I'm not an ethicist, but I believe at a practical level, it doesn't make sense to not represent who you are as an individual. Carly, we've talked a lot about things like sexting. Does that mean that romance is dead? I don't think romance is dead. Actually, I think that something that online dating has done especially personally for me, has reconstructed old school dating dynamics. So before online dating, you'd like tend to meet through work and through friends or out at a bar and you're drunk and um, I don't know, you're not going on like real dates. I feel like real dates are back. Like if you meet someone on Tinder, you're matching, you're meeting up with them at like 7 p.m., mm -hmm. you're getting dressed up, you're sitting face to face at a bar, you're sober when you meet. Like that, to me, that is an old school date. Whereas mm -hmm. for a while, I feel like dating was out. That seems like a good place to close this edition of The Business of Life. I'd like to thank our panellists for joining us today, Carly, Christopher and Jessica, and all of you for watching at home. We'll see you next time on The Business of Life. Bye-bye. Business of Life is made possible by Better Money Habits. It's a free resource that helps you build practical knowledge and take control of your finances. Powered by Bank of America. See more at bettermoneyhabits.com.